An increasing signal for a possible hurricane by the middle of the month that could track towards land, the latest in today's video. Welcome in, folks. Great to see you on this, uh, I believe it is Wednesday, right? Yeah, Wednesday, August 6th now, and uh, really moving along through the month pretty quickly. Feels like we just started it, and I guess still in the beginning stages of the month. But as we have anticipated, tropical activity definitely been upticking. We finally got the Dexter name this week. Uh, we'll have a pretty good chance to get another name over the next five days or so into the Atlantic. And then it's that uh, seven to 10 day time frame. We're going to have to watch for potential impacts uh, to land and maybe even the United States further on down the road from there as a robust wave is being picked up on really all of our models for a higher end chance of developing into a storm. And this one will have hurricane potential. So we'll break all that down for you in today's video. Now, if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Gerald. I'm a meteorologist at WCCB Charlotte. And if you haven't already, like the video, subscribe, and hit the bell for the latest notifications. We are, uh, generally speaking, starting to think about getting to 50K subs. Uh, I believe we're at 42, knocking generally on the doorstep of 43,000 right now. If we can get to 50,000 by the end of hurricane season, that would be awesome for the channel, and uh, I would appreciate it a lot. And uh, again, if you watch regularly, there's no reason not to subscribe. Uh, it doesn't cost anything. It's free, and it'll just make these videos show up easier in your feed. All right, let's go ahead and start uh, talking weather here, and uh, we'll go ahead and take a look. This is just a loop of the latest European model from this afternoon. And you can see these pieces of energy uh, kind of going in and around the Atlantic. We've got Dexter here at the beginning of the loop moving out of here. We've got a secondary piece of energy that may try to form uh, here into the central Atlantic over this weekend. And then after it, a more robust, powerful wave of energy that could try to become a storm or even a hurricane by the middle of the month. So a lot to unpack again. Uh, you can see here just on the latest model run in the European, generally speaking, one of our more reliable computer models. Now, let's give you a quick look at what's happening out there right now uh, here in the tropical Atlantic. Three areas highlighted by the National Hurricane Center. We've got Tropical Storm Dexter. Not going to talk about that one because it's really just nobody's problem. It's going to move into the North Atlantic and become uh, subtropical here really over the coming days. Other than that, we've got this big area of interest that actually looks a lot different today than it did yesterday uh, from uh, really the South Carolina coast all the way up through much of the East Coast having a chance to develop into something the good news is the latest trend in the models has been for whatever does develop to head out to sea by the time we get towards this weekend. But south of there, another wave kind of working towards South Florida right now. You can see that on radar imagery. And that one going to get into the Gulf and we'll have the chance as well to maybe become something, although low enough that the National Hurricane Center isn't pointing it out right now, but also once more could increase rainfall chances even more in the southeast over the next five days. Then you see in the main development region, a big old orange here on the map. Uh, that is an area of interest or now an invest, I should say, with a 60 percent chance of development. Uh, so that's above 50 now that this will get the E name, which would be Aaron. The good news with this one is right now looks to curve out the sea. It's what's behind that one, though, that is likely going to get tagged over the coming days that will have higher end possibilities of impacting land. So with that said, let's go ahead and start breaking down these areas one by one. Let's start with that homegrown potential over really the rest of this week. And you can see both those areas I'm watching. We've got the one designated by the National Hurricane Center uh, starting to spin a little bit and definitely seeing higher thunderstorm activity this afternoon with this area of interest. So we'll see uh, what happens. It'll have a shot at grabbing that error name. Not overly high right now, as I showed you in that 30 to 40 percent range of becoming a named storm. South of there, another wave. We actually were talking about this a long time ago. This had the chance to develop. Uh, some of the models were showing that happened. Never happened, uh, but the wave's still there, and now uh, kind of working towards the Gulf over the coming days, and you can already see uh, that this is going to increase thunderstorm activity over the Sunshine State and really other portions of the southeast as well, including this area of interest, which could bring some rain up the Carolina coastline. So uh, an active scene here, but nothing overly jumping out that uh, is concerning. Uh, definitely both of these will have at least a chance of developing into a named storm, uh, but not very high confidence that that'll happen at this time. Either way, they will bring rainfall impacts. Now, where are they going? Uh, well, one of the reasons that uh, confidence is not very high right now is the models are just not overly excited. In fact, we saw a bit of a downtrend since yesterday's video. Now, still some members show the Gulf area trying to develop and working up into the southeast, and uh, some members show this Atlantic area trying to develop into something and working out to sea, but there's just not a well-defined signal, and whenever you're talking about weather, you really want to see high confidence 
And right now, low confidence. And we're talking about it either way. We've been doing that all hurricane season because, uh, quite frankly, there's really not much else to talk about unless I want to start talking county by county weather, uh, which I don't think any of us want. So we always talk about the possibilities here. And this, again, still having the chance at something, uh, but really just going to be a rainfall maker more than anything else at this point. You can see that here on some of our latest model guidance. This is the blend of models. So it brings a whole bunch of data together, finds an average or a mean, and watch rainfall totals over the coming days. This is by tomorrow afternoon into your Friday, into your Saturday, into your Sunday, Monday of next week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you get the point. This is all the way a week out now. And uh, yeah, we've got higher end rainfall potential definitely here from Florida up through South Georgia into coastal South Carolina. Uh, so we'll need to watch for a little bit of flooding. We've already seen heavy rain out here over the past couple of days. Uh, these two little waves combined with the stalled out front isn't really going to help our problems at all, uh, but uh, definitely something to watch nonetheless, whether this gets a name or not, uh, is going to be a talking point for local meteorologists across this part of the country due to that increasing rainfall uh, that will be accompanying it. All right, that's the area in the southeast. Let's go ahead now and take out, uh, take you back out to the main development region where two potential storms could form over the next 10 days. Well, kind of a skinny look at satellite here, but uh, I put it this way so we could really just see the entire intertropical convergence zone or the ITCZ. And uh, every year, basically, this is a belt of thunderstorm activity that goes all the way around the globe. And during our summer months here in North America and the Northern Hemisphere, uh, this kind of moves up into the tropical Atlantic. And this is why we have a hurricane season in the first place is this belt of unsettled weather over these warm waters. And uh, sure enough, going to give the chance at some named storms. So right here, uh, this is now newly uh, uh, designated invest by the National Hurricane Center. I want to say 96L, if my memory serves me correctly. I probably should have written that down before I started the video. But either way, an area that they are investigating, doesn't really matter what they're calling it right now, an area that we're investigating for potential development. Now, the good news is the trend today has been for this to move out to sea. That was already kind of the thought yesterday, but I showed you uh, some models show to getting closer to the United States today. They're kind of backing off on that idea, but still developing it into a potential named storm. Behind it, a new wave rolling off of Africa, and the thought process with this one is by the time that uh, this wave finds its off-ramp, that off-ramp is going to close up, and this one will have an easier path to continue westward towards the islands. Now, after that, it's anybody's guess. It could maybe get into the Caribbean. It could uh, get shredded apart by the islands. It could stay up north, maybe towards uh, the Bahamas, or maybe it curves out to sea right after that. Who knows? Uh, but uh, something we need to watch, and the good news is plenty of time to do so, uh, as is probably probably not a surprise to anyone when something's just coming off of Africa and it's moving at the same speed that you're moving generally when you're driving through a small town and you're not trying to get a ticket. That means we got plenty of time to watch it. So that's the good news, but definitely starting to look more tropical out here, getting a flare up on satellite and some of the models as well, showing higher end potential that even both of these could develop. Speaking of those steering currents, here's the good news for the first storm, the one that is the invest right now and being watched, uh, that big orange blob I showed you earlier. Here's the off-ramp. It's this little blueberry on the map up into the North Atlantic. That creates kind of a gap in the flow here. And here's the storm itself uh, potentially forming by you know the time we come into this weekend. Going to find a pretty good way out of here, I think, between these two ridges. Now, whenever you see these ridges of high pressure, uh, generally those are, you know, imagine you've got construction on the off-ramp and it's closed. You can't take it. You got to keep going. Um, that's generally what the orange areas on the map mean, but we've got a blueberry. Like I said, we've got an open off ramp here uh, for this storm to take. Now, as we go deeper into the month, though, notice what starts to happen here by uh, about, you know, five to seven days from now, we start to get ridging building back in here. The Bermuda high strengthening a bit, not overly strong. This is not a super guaranteed. Everything's going to keep moving west, but strong enough that as long as a storm isn't super strong and kind of wants to pull north through that, uh, any waves are going to continue to work off this way. So what does that mean further on down the road? Well, if you keep it going, uh, there are, you know, some opportunities for a storm to get pulled on up out of here. But I'll be honest, the flow is just kind of not that strong in general. There's not a super strong Bermuda high. There's not a super strong trough working through just kind of typical zonal flow out here. So if any storm stays weak enough, long enough, uh, and I know it's kind of ironic. You'd think a weak storm would be good news, but if it stays weak for most of its journey out here and doesn't really start to get strong until the islands, uh, that would probably be bad news. Now, if a storm gets super strong early, it naturally wants to pull north and could probably move through this zonal flow in a way. Uh, but if it stays kind of weak and doesn't uh, have a lot of pull northward, it then gets strong and uh, doesn't start pulling north until maybe the ridge builds back in in a stronger way, 
could be a problem for the United States and definitely could be a problem for the islands out here, whether that's the Antilles, Hispaniola, Cuba, the Bahamas, uh, or even Puerto Rico. So uh, we're going to need to watch. We're going to need to watch for it here. Just looking at the upper level flow, you can see. Uh, a lot to figure out and a lot to be desired in some of the models. Now, uh, you know, what are the odds this does develop? Well, again, it's a pretty strong wave. It's not a, a small, weak one by any means. You can see here on our water vapor uh, or our precipitable water, here it is. By the time we get about a week from now, uh, we've got uh, that big area of greenage here on the map and, uh, you know, moist enough. Now, dry air to the north again, but I think this one's going to stay far enough south uh, that dry air probably won't uh, inhibit its chances of development all that much. Same thing for the wind shear. By the time we get about a week from now when this would have a chance to develop, we've got some blue on the map out here indicating below average wind shear, and that includes out here to the Caribbean and towards the islands. So something to watch for sure. Environmental conditions, uh, I think, are going to be favorable enough. We've also got an MJO phase passing over. That helps to create rising motion. We're getting into that time of the year. That climatology says you have a better chance of getting a storm. So a lot of background features here suggest now, this will definitely have a pretty good shot at becoming something. Now, whether that hits land or not, that's the question mark, but definitely a possibility. Those are the background features. What about the models themselves? What are they showing? Are they getting us a big hurricane or maybe nothing at all? Let's switch on over and take a look. Well, everyone's favorite happy hour model, the GFS, and we call it the happy hour model. And by we, I mean me and, you know, probably five other people. But uh, enough people call it that because a lot of the time it shows pretty crazy things that don't really end up happening. So kind of off its rocker a little bit, as one might say. Uh, let's show you what it shows, though. Here's by uh, Thursday into Friday. This is Dexter, again, pulling on out to sea as an extra tropical storm. Uh, not a problem to land. Down south, this is the invest, the GFS, trying to get something going there. All of this before even that main wave that, you know, we just uh, spent so much time talking about. Now, keep it going on out in time. The GFS, yeah, tries to develop that little invest. I would say this is probably a depression or a storm on the GFS model, something enough that maybe it gets the E name Aaron, and then also tries to develop that little area off the coast uh, by this coming Monday and pulling it out to sea. So we could start going through names pretty quickly, even if it's not anything overly strong. Also something to watch that I don't really have a segment on, uh, you know, dedicated to in the video. Notice this little area down in the Caribbean. Some of our models, and I mean some in a pretty small sense, not a lot of them, but a slight uptrend today that maybe something tries to get going in the Caribbean. I showed you wind shear uh, decreasing out there and a little small wave working through right now. We'll see. We'll monitor it. But uh, you can see behind it a much more pronounced storm beginning to develop in the main development region. And uh, yeah, sure enough, gets strong, gets to hurricane status by about eight or so days from now. Uh, and keeps tracking generally towards the islands. And we'll pause it here right around 10 days from now. I'm not going to go any further than this because uh, it's going to change by tomorrow anyway. So there's not much point. But we do have a pretty strong hurricane. Uh, I'd say a major hurricane here close to the islands with a Bermuda high here that would continue to push it generally towards the United States. Does that mean that's exactly what's going to happen? No. Is it a possibility, though? Yeah, it is. And strong enough one that I felt, you know, like showing it today. Show you two more models, the European AI model, and uh, we'll keep on moving this ahead in a time. Here's the big wave uh, trying to develop into a storm again by about a week from now is whenever that option is going to open up. So I do expect by maybe tomorrow, if not tomorrow, Friday, to have an area of interest with this from the National Hurricane Center. Euro AI model 10 days out from now. Same thing as the GFS, same placement, just a little bit weaker. And uh, the Euro AI model does eventually go on to show it getting closer to the United States as well, but not going to show you the past 10 days here. Uh, here. Uh, European model, what does it show? Old reliable? Well, uh, keep it going ahead in a time. Here's a little invest right now. Again, a whole lot of not really anything, especially for land. Keeps on pulling out to see. Maybe we get a name from it. Maybe we get a name from this little East Coast system. Either way, not high impacts on this model from either or. But by 10 days from now, similar to some of the other models, does get that uh, next wave into a storm further north than the others and does have a pretty clear exit route here out to sea. You can see kind of some weakness in that orange on the map. Uh, so a little bit different, but nonetheless, the models are showing uh, us getting a storm here over the next 10 days. The models are great. What about the ensembles? Are the ensembles on board? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at them right now. GFS ensembles, yeah, starting to get pretty excited about some of these areas. And uh, here's the one that could form into something, but likely pulls out to sea a little area off the East Coast, like we mentioned. Uh, but uh, new on the model today, like I mentioned, some kind of noise down here in the Caribbean, even some members getting up into the Gulf within 10 days from now. We'll watch that. We'll see if it uh, trends up or not. But uh, this big corridor right here of bright colors you see, that's the storm that I just told you about. And that 10-day time frame getting near the islands and pretty good consistency across the models that something is near the northern Antilles by about 10 days from now. The ensembles here from the GFS 
showing a pretty similar story. The European ensembles, yeah, on board as well. We've got plenty with that first invest uh, forming into a storm, pulling on out to sea. That likely gets a name according to the European ensembles. A little bit of noise against something down here in the Caribbean. Not overly strong here. That's maybe 10 members out of um, a lot. Uh, so probably only like 25% of the uh, European members showing something, but more like 50, 60% uh, showing uh, that next area that we need to watch. Again, just like the GFS has it in this exact same corridor of the map right around 10 days from now. So we're going to watch it. Uh, it's uptrending for sure. And I know I've, you know, we've, Talk about a ton of different areas, but uh, definitely starting to get through some of those names here in the tropics and more concerning signs as we go towards the middle of the month uh, with this wave and potentially a blocking pattern that could keep it moving west, although still plenty of questions to be answered. All right, that's your update on the tropics. Let's uh, bring things on back home and give you the latest there. Well, it has just been an incredible couple of days here in the southeast. I mean, cool, fall-like, rainy, pretty unheard of, honestly, for early August standards, uh, for August standards in general, especially early August. I mean, this is, you know, not something you see very often. And because of that, yeah, still seeing rain up in the Triangle of North Carolina, even in the southeastern North Carolina, the Outer Banks, Southeast Virginia, up to Richmond, Newport News, uh, Virginia Beach, and even some of the Northeast getting in on that rain, New Jersey, Delaware, uh, back out towards Philly and New York City, seeing some of that energy just continue to crawl up. Up the coast outside of there the big story has been severe weather which feels like it's been the story for just months on end i think we hit march and we just never stopped the severe weather up in the northern plains it has been uh, very active for at least the past uh, two or three months since june uh, and some of that even getting down into the midwest and central plains so that's what we're seeing out there right now nothing crazy though it's still seeing some smoke in the northeast uh, but no real main weather makers across the map right now that are jumping out as uh, you know, one specific storm. And honestly, that probably hangs the course for a little while. Now, as we keep going, uh, I do think by this weekend, we get uh, a more defined mid-level system to work on through. That could spark a, a more defined uh, surface storm system here. So we'll see what that does. But it's through the same areas. It's into the Northern Plains, the Dakotas, Nebraska, Iowa, Minnesota. It's going to bring severe weather. I know I sound like a broken record here and a broken clock or whatever, but it's the same thing. It just <laughs> keeps on happening and keeps on coming. Now, in terms of temperatures, we are going to warm back up in a pretty big way across the east. That includes the southeast, where we've been so cool uh, by this weekend, especially the northeast, the Midwest. Uh, big Ridge moves in. That means heat going to return. And then into the southeast, getting at least back to average, if not slightly above average. The good news is this. We're in August now. We're no longer in uh, late June, early July. So uh, the average temperatures are going down, generally speaking. Now, hot is still hot. Uh, but um, something we're probably a little more used to and not nearly as hot as some of these heat waves that we've had recently. Now, talking about severe weather, uh, here it is. You can see over the coming days, uh, severe weather chances really increasing across North Dakota, Montana, South Dakota, getting into Minnesota, Iowa, Wisconsin, and uh, really some of the same areas over and over again. And I'll be honest with you folks, I know I haven't talked a whole lot about this in depth um, uh, there's only so much I can tell you on a nightly video that uh, could change from a mesoscale standpoint the next day. So just always have a way to get watches and warnings, especially up in the Midwest, the Northern Plains right now. Uh, severe weather season still cranking things out. So just expect severe weather. Uh, always check in with your local meteorologist, your National Weather Service, and uh, things like that. You know, in this format, there's only so much I can do uh, from that side of things. Uh, surface map going ahead into time. Uh, here we go. By the weekend, here's that surface storm getting going from that upper level system. Yeah, pretty strong storm up into Canada. A sign of changing seasons. We're starting to get these strong surface storms again to get back down towards the United States. That starts to happen during the fall months. And before you know it, it'll be winter. And we'll see if these guys can be all the way down near the Gulf and right up the East Coast, right? I'm sure many of you are ready for that, myself included. Other than that, I mean, rain and storming is continuing in the Southeast, especially Florida with that uh, Gulf system starting to work in increasing chances some severe weather could get into the midwest uh, again just days of it there it looks like uh, here even by early next week the northeast probably the winter on the map for the most quiet weather over the next seven days it looks like all things considered final thing i'll show you is the heat map and uh, still chilly in the mid-atlantic and the east coast over the coming days but here we go by the weekend and early next week this is sunday afternoon Big dome of heat from eastern Canada all the way down the Ohio Valley. Still hanging on to cooler to average temperatures down into the Carolinas, Virginia, Georgia, and Florida, but warmer than it has been, especially for areas in the foothills who have been uh, really stuck in the fall-like weather for what feels like quite some time now. Uh, almost feels like seasonal depression kicking in, right? You're wondering where summer went. But uh, definitely, I do see signs.
signs of a warm up. And if we go well out in time here, uh, the models in general showing uh, back to at least average, if not above average temperatures, sea to sea or o- ocean to ocean, coast to coast, whatever you want to say, uh, by the time we get about 10 days out from now. Obviously, any tropical systems could put some sort of dent in that, but uh, uh, plenty of time to keep on watching. All right, well, that's all I got for y'all on this uh, Wednesday. Again, if you enjoyed it, like it, subscribe. Let me know where you're watching from in the comments as well. Always fun to read those. Y'all have a great one, and I'll see you all tomorrow.